Sometimes people ask me what it's like to be a vet. Well, I love animals. I was around animals when I was growing up and I couldn't imagine living any other way. It's more than just professional satisfaction. There's a spiritual family and friendship aspect to this work. Now, let's take a look at some of the things that might happen during a day in the life of a vet. We caught up with Dr. Steve DeBruin at a farm near Amanda in Fairfield County. This was a cattle call. Vaccinations, deworming, castrations, in other words, scheduled maintenance. We're giving them two vaccinations. This is a uh, warmer that will actually kill the worms inside the intestines. He stays a bowl, right, Mike? For a large animal vet, even routine procedures carry a degree of risk. The football helmet came up because I was injured a couple times. Uh, one time we were castrating like a 750-pound uh, bull calf, which is pretty big, and the guy was holding the tail, and that bull kicked me in the head. And, and we went ahead and finished the job up, and everybody thought I was all right, including myself. And at that time, I had an automatic transmission in the truck, and I woke up perched on the edge of this ditch, <laughs> and it was still in drive. So when I woke up, and I don't know how long I was sitting there, but when I woke up, I quietly put the transmission back into reverse. Um, and then, just as luck would happen, three or four weeks later, a three-day-old baby calf just kicked and kind of cut slices in my face. After those two experiences, I said, gee, I think we'll just wear a helmet. <laughs> and I always tell the farmers, it helps my head, it doesn't protect the rest of me. <laughs> he had a finger mashed by an angry bull. One time he had his knee injured. So there are some physical injuries. Um, when he has a late night, I really get concerned about, is he going to be too tired to make it home? And every now and then, I'll send the ch one of the children with him or I will go with him just to try and keep him awake. I started in the business about, I think it's been about 22 years ago now. And at that time, our furthest client lived 12 miles away. We catered towards those people that are, are farming for a living or a livelihood. And, Sometimes these operations are worth eight, ten, fifteen million dollars. So, so we like the expertise that can uh, help them make the correct decisions. And with that in mind, and we, we go quite a few, we go quite a few miles. The uh, we typically per veterinarian drive about forty to fifty thousand miles a year, and some of those calls get pretty involved. It's early evening and Dr. DeBruin has traveled to a horse farm in northeast Perry County. They don't think about it until it's too late. <laughs> yeah. Real pretty places. They have them there. We got that. You ready? Yep. You don't fight my finger, we'll look behind me. What we did is we took blood out of each of the horses and that was for uh, equine infectious anemia, which we commonly call Coggins. The vaccinations that we, we were giving was the uh, Fluvac Innovator 5, which has in it Eastern Western Cephalitis, which are brain infections in horses that are spread mostly by mosquitoes. For the second vaccine, the third needle, was for the, um, for the West Niles virus, and, and most horses will die from that, so it's real important to prevent that problem. Dr. DeBruin has taken care of the horses, but he's received an emergency call from a farmer in Perry County. The farmer's cow has, in layman's terms, a twisted stomach. This could easily turn into a life-threatening condition called a torsion. The torsion will twist off the blood vessels, and that'll result in the cow going to shock and, and dying within a few hours. So that's the reason we're down here at 9 o'clock at night to fix this cow rather than waiting until tomorrow morning. Steve really likes being a veterinarian because he loves cows. He enjoys keeping agriculture alive in this area. And that was one of the missions he started out with. It's, I want agriculture to thrive in the state that we live in. 
I want my children and grandchildren to have the opportunity to farm. And if being a veterinarian and making sure that the animal industry thrives helps that, that's what I'm going to do. My grandfather had a farm. It was a mixed dairy cow, beef cow, hog farm. And I spent a lot of time there. And the veterinarian that would come there uh, surely interested me. And I liked what he was doing. And I've always liked animals. and. Uh, and, and having said that, you know, I, I sure like to work with the people that's associated with the animals. By 9.45, the surgery is over, and the cow is doing much better. But Dr. DeBruin's day is far from over. He's received an emergency call from the Ohio State Fairgrounds in Columbus. There are times where you're wondering, oh, gee, does he really need to go on this call? There's just those times, you know, you just have to get in there and, and do what needs to be done. After nearly an hour on the road, he's at his last stop. It's the night before the annual Ohio Dairy Expo, and one of the cows has a problem. It was starting to swell just today. It is starting to swell. It's starting to swell a lot. The plan is we're going to give her some vitamin E to, to help with the immune system. We're going to give her some banamine, which is an anti-inflammatory works kind of like aspirin. It takes swelling out, pain out. The physical aspects can be pretty demanding. The cows weigh 13, 1,500 pounds, and even a five or 600 pound calf can kick, can kick pretty hard. You know, so, so there is some physically demanding things. It's after midnight. Just one long drive home, and the day is done. Yesterday, we went into about five different counties. And uh, this call that we're going on today to this newer dairy is the farthest one we go to. And it is right around 100 miles away from, from our home base. There is a lot of tough, dirty work. I mean, no doubt about that. Sometimes you think I went to school for a long time to do this. Um, but it's really rewarding. You know, yesterday when we were castrating calves, for example, you know, there's blood on your hands and stuff and you think, Gee, you know, this is bad, but you realize you're making the producer, you know, a, a, a profit at the end of the day. Um, a lot of time I spend palpating cows, which means I put my arm in the cow's rectum to fill the size of the uterus to determine if she's pregnant or not. Over food animal females need to have offspring for the whole cycle to work, so, so that's really important. On this Clark County farm, Dr. DeBruin will perform surgery on another cow with a twisted stomach. The procedure will be real similar to the RDA that we did last night, except we'll bring that stomach across from the other side and put it there. After a million miles on the road, the late nights, and the occasional cuts and bruises, what's left to love about this job? I guess what I love about being a vet is, um, you know, you still, after all this time, you still like to see those calves being born. You still like to see little baby pigs you know, squirming around underneath the sow, come to suck the mother. Um, you still like to see children with the puppies.